But uh, I'd like to encourage you, be expectant. Yeah, that's good. Be expectant. Uh, be ready to receive because something is in, in place for us. I've, I've, I've spoken to uh, Phil. He's excited, ready, and uh, it's going to be a great time. He's saying God is going to do an awesome time, uh, an awesome thing amongst us. The Spirit of God is going to move in a mighty way. But then again, that is in regarding to what we are expecting. So I'd like to encourage you to be expectant. Also, I'd like for us to be able to uh, stay prayerful and don't be discouraged. Uh, a lot of people right now are discouraged with uh, the election results not being out yet. But it is okay. Things are working out. You just need to be in prayer. Don't panic. That's why I was saying when you go out to vote, vote your belief. If you believe in God, you're voting on your belief, and God is going to see that what you're believing Him for is going to come to pass. If you're looking at a man, you're going to be disappointed because the man you wanted to see, you're not seeing them yet. And so you're going to be frustrated. So don't look unto the man. You put your hope and trust in God. That God, I thank you for in my life. I thank you that you worked through me. And what I did, I did because of what I believe. And I know that whoever believes in you will never be disappointed. And so don't be disappointed, don't be discouraged, put your faith and put your trust in God because the best is yet to come. Amen? Amen. And we continue to pray and trust God that if there is anything that is hidden, it be exposed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If there is any kind of manipulation or any kind of, of, of controlling that is taking place, God to reveal that so that the truth can come out because it is only the truth that can set us free and this nation has got a plan and a purpose in God's timetable that this nation has to do great things. This is the only nation in all the world that has sent people out to be able to minister to many countries. This is the only nation that has been able to stand up and help many nations and along, and around the world. Therefore, put your trust and faith in God because God is doing something special in this nation. And because you are in this nation, God is doing something special through you, but it's depending on your prayers. Amen? It is through your prayers that God will be able to do something. If you don't pray, if you quit praying and say, okay, what am I going to do now? No, you have to endure all the way to the end. Amen? Unless you see your promise come to pass, don't give up and don't quit and don't give in. I'm going to stand until I see what I'm believing God for coming to pass. Amen? And so whatever votes had been cast, whether they were cast months ahead, last week, or even just yesterday... They are being worked on, and we just have to put our trust in God. Pray for the leaders. Never stop praying for the leaders. All of them, we need to pray for them, because right now, whatever they say, depending on who is following them, can send people in one way or another. We pray that they are peaceful. We pray that they are respectful. We pray that they are honorable. Amen? We pray for all those who voted for somebody, that they'll hold their peace and wait for God to be able to work through the system so that the right person will be able to step in position of authority. So we pray for that, that this nation will be at peace. There's no calamities, there's no chaos that will uh, erupt in this nation. Why? Because we, the church, can stand and can pray. We, the church, can stand and push back the darkness as we stand in the word of God. Amen? And therefore, don't give up. Don't give uh, uh, in. Don't join in negative thoughts. <laughs> your words have got power. Your words have got authority. And you need to stand in that and believe that because God is watching over your words because he wants to perform. So if you give him his words back, he will perform something with it. Amen? Amen. So let's just open this evening with a word of prayer and just believe God that we're going to have a good time. Heavenly Father, we are forever grateful for your grace and for your mercy. What a great honor that you've given to us to be called your children. And for the Lord, you have bathed us through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have brought us nigh to you through the blood of Jesus. And your spirit now dwelling inside of us, Lord, bearing witness with our spirit that we are your children, we can declare that you are our Father. And now we thank you as the sons of the Most High God. We are being led by the Spirit of God. We obey the Spirit of God and we yield to the Spirit of God. Therefore, Lord, we thank you tonight. Even as you're speaking to us, Lord, you are bringing comfort, you are bringing exhortation, you are bringing encouragement to us, you are bringing correction to us, and Lord, we are listening as you speak to us, because there is life in your word, there is power in your word, and Father, we receive with meekness your word that is coming to us, that will be able to transform the way we think, 
change the way we think and change the way we live and change the way we speak. So we thank you and we honor you tonight that your word will never return back to you void, but it will accomplish that which you have purposed tonight. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for revealing the secret that is in the word that we may be able to lay hold of it and make it our very own. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> If there is any time we need to walk in faith, live by faith, there is no any other time better than this particular time. Faith is so more important that we really need to live in walk by faith. And us as believers, we need to understand that faith is not something we pull out whenever we need something. It is the way we live. And therefore, last week I started by share, uh, share, uh, sharing with us what faith is, why it is important, and how we need to build it up. Your faith needs to grow. It needs to grow. And therefore today I would like for us to be able to just to, to, to learn more a little bit and grow from that. We learned last week what faith is. We realized that faith is just belief. It is a trust. It is a confidence that we have in God. And if you're going to have faith in God, then you need to know how to obtain that faith. And then therefore we realize again that why do we need faith? We realize that faith is important for us as believers because number one, we couldn't be saved without faith. So, so that in Ephesians 2, 8, without faith we could not be saved. Then we also saw in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and verses 9, that through faith we were justified and therefore we maintain our innocency through faith by the blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore we realize also that in Galatians 3, 11, the Bible says that, you know what, the just shall live by faith. In other words, we are living by faith. So we see the importance why we really need this faith. We cannot live without it. We cannot maintain our righteousness without it. We cannot be born again without it. We also see that this is how we live. For the just shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. This is our way of living. So faith is so important to the effect that if we are going to live successfully as believers, then we need to understand how we trust God in everything that we do. Our confidence in God in everything that we do has to be part of our lifetime. Not just some days, all the time, every single day. Then we also saw in Hebrews eleven six that is it is impossible to please God without faith. In other words, God will never be pleased by faith. And if you're pleasing God, means you are impressing God. And therefore, we saw a few things that impressed Jesus. You know? and, and he said that they had great faith. One of them was the Syrophoenician woman who came to Jesus. And Jesus <clears throat> said that, uh, first of all, she called unto Jesus. And Jesus refused to answer. And the disciples said, no, put her away. She's bothering us. And Jesus refused to answer. He said, I only came to the house of Israel. But then uh, she kept on calling on to Jesus, and then Jesus said, that, You know what? I cannot give the children's bread, I cannot give the ch uh, children's bread to the dogs. Well, which is an offensive. She already called her a dog. If you're not a Jew, then you are considered to be a dog. You know, she could have called her that, You know what? You are maybe a Samaritan, or maybe you are a Gentile. But he went ahead and said, You are a dog. I cannot give you the children's food. Well, but despite her being called a dog, she stood in there and said, Even the dogs get crumbs as well. And so Jesus said, I've never seen faith like this. In other words, her trust and confidence in Jesus was regardless of what you say, regardless of what you do, I know I have a place with you that even though I'm being called names, even though I've been set at a certain category, even though I'm of a different race, I still believe that you will never leave me, you will never forsake me, and your words will never return back void. Therefore, you are going to do something to me. And Jesus said, I've never seen such a great kind of faith. Why? Because she never gave up on her trust, her confidence, and assurance in Jesus Christ. Then we also saw the, uh, the centurion in Matthew chapter 5. And it's actually Matthew chapter 8, the centurion. He also came and told Jesus, you know what, my servant is sick at home. You come, to, to, you come home. No, my servant is sick at home. Jesus said, I'll come to your home. And he said, no, you don't need to come to me. Because if you say you are a man of authority, I'm also a man of authority. And authority is released through words. If I speak, then my servants do whatever I've asked them to do. If you also say you are a person of authority as you are, then you don't need to come to my place. Why? I am a centurion, number one. Number two, I am not worthy to host you in my home. And I know that it is difficult for a Jew to come to an un-Jewish home. Therefore, you just speak and that will be okay. And Jesus said, I've never found such great faith again in that kind of, uh, uh, particular situation. So we see that they impressed Jesus or they pleased him. The fact that 
he was able to do something. So if we understand that the, another reason why we need faith is to impress God, because without faith it is impossible to please God, then we will not be able to receive our results because God is only impressed by faith. And therefore, that's one of the reasons that we saw uh, we need to have faith. The other thing we saw also was uh, by faith we inherit the promises that has already been given to us. Yes, God has already declared what's ours. God has already told what belongs to us. But if we don't have faith to reach out and receive it, we will never lay hold of those promises and make them our own. So in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 12, we see that we need to imitate those who've gone through us, uh, before us, because through faith and patience, they obtained the promises. In other words, they had faith and then they developed endurance. So uh, there are some things that will take place instantaneously. There are some things that will have to, uh, will have to wait for your endurance for it, for it to come through. And you know what? That is, what? that is one of the places where we are in today. Uh, as far as I remember, uh, most of the presidential elections, by today we, we have an, uh, somebody already announced who the president is. But in this particular situation, we are not. So what do we need to do? We need to endure while we're still in faith. Because through faith and patience, you obtain the promises. And therefore, we know the promise is somebody whom God has ordained to be in that position is going to be in that position. And therefore, we have to stay in faith and trust in God because I voted what I believed and therefore I am in faith. But now I have to develop endurance. I have to be patient. I have to be able to stay in and say, God, regardless of what I see, I want to be frustrated. I'll stay in here until I see that which I believe come to pass. And who is that whom you believe? The one whom God is going to set there. What if he's the person whom I don't like? It is not, you are not voting for somebody whom you like or whom you do not like. You are voting for what you believe. And therefore, God is going by what you believe. And whoever is going to be there, God is going to see to it that he's going to work through that individual. What if they were not saying whatever they were going to do that they're going to do? Well, the Bible says that the heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. And God is able to turn the heart of a king. And so all we've got to do is put our trust in God. Never give up. Never lose hope. Remember, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they were carried into captivity. Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down and worship me, I'm going to put you in the fire and you're going to burn. And they say, no, we don't need to answer in that matter. Why? Because our belief in God is greater than your demand. And so when they were thrown in, God showed up because they never cast away their confidence. They never cast away their hope and their faith and their belief in God. And God says, you know what? I'm only impressed by faith. And as long as you stay in faith towards me, I will show up strong on your behalf because my eyes are always running to and fro, seeking those whose hearts are loyal that I may show myself strong on their behalf. Therefore, through faith and patience, we obtain the promises. Amen? And that's where we have to be. And therefore today, I'd like to be able to begin from uh, Romans chapter 10. How do we uh, obtain this faith? How do we obtain this faith? Because if we don't know how to obtain this faith, then we may be able to miss on how to obtain it. Well, those who are watching online, I want to welcome you and say thank you for taking your time to, uh, to join us. And uh, I believe that you're being blessed as well. Uh, the same spirit that is over here is also coming through the airwaves and you can be able to receive that way and be blessed. Amen. So Romans chapter 10, how do we obtain faith? Now we have gone through why we need faith and we have seen just a few examples. There are so many examples that we have that... Uh, Show us why we need faith. We've just seen a few. You can't be born again without it. You can't impress God without it. You cannot walk and live your life as a, as a believer without faith. You cannot obtain the promises without it. And so then in Romans chapter 10, I would like to read verses 12 and 13. I want to show you something for us believers because we have to uh, incline our thoughts to the word of God. In verses uh, 12 and 13, the King James Version says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And here we see that faith makes no distinction. So when we are believers, there shouldn't be any distinction amongst us because whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whether you are male, whether you are female, whether you are of a different kind of nationality, whether you have a different kind of skin pigmentation, it does not matter. It is the same, same faith that you use to call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. So there is no distinction in faith. 
Once you're a believer, we are aware of our differences, but our differences does not separate us. It strengthens us because it is the same faith that has brought us to the same God. And therefore, regardless of what your skin pigmentation is, regardless of what your gender is, regardless of what your nationality is, that does not matter. I'm aware that you're of a different nationality. I am aware that you're of a different skin pigmentation. I am aware that you're of a different gender. But that does not separate us. That unites us because the only thing that has brought us together is faith in God. And therefore we see here it says, for the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Now the, the Passion Translation uh, says this. So then faith eliminates the distinction between Jews and non-Jew. For he is the same Lord for all people and he has enough treasures to lavish generously upon all who call on him. And it's true, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be rescued and will experience new life. And therefore, we as believers, when we come together, we need to begin to renew our minds. Yes, we come from the world with a different kind of mindset. But when we come together as a believer, we should always learn to grow this way. There is no distinction amongst us because of faith. It is the same God, the same faith that we approach God with. Therefore, there is no difference amongst us. Regardless of who you are, where you are from, what you have, I don't care how rich you think you are or how poor you may think you are or whatever kind of background you are coming from, we all have faith that we are approaching the same God with. Amen? And that should eliminate any kind of separation amongst the believer. And therefore, it means there shouldn't be any kind of division in the body of Christ. There shouldn't be any kind of groups set in the body of Christ thinking that we are special than they. We are all one through faith, the same God. And God says, whoever, not they that will call me, whoever, whoever is going to call upon me will be saved. Whether you are male or female, whether what kind of nationality, whether what kind of skin pigmentation, God says, whoever and so whoever is approaching the same God, and it is our faith. Amen? And therefore, once we learn that, then it helps us to be able to grow in love and be strengthened in love. In verses 17, verses 17, he says, So then faith comes by hearing. So then faith comes by hearing. Well, we have to go back again and say, what is faith? The dictionary definition of faith is complete confidence, complete trust, complete assurance in God. Therefore, we can say, so then... Complete assurance, complete confidence, and complete trust comes by hearing. So you're never going to develop your confidence and assurance and trust in God if you don't hear. You must hear in order for you to develop that. If you don't hear, you're never going to develop. So it says it comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Therefore, don't hear any kind of words if you want to develop your confidence, assurity, and trust in God. You must hear his words. Because it is only his words that you keep on hearing that will continue to develop your assurance in him, trust in him, and confidence in him. Yes, you are going against the grain. Because you are on earth, you are seeing what's going on on earth, but you've got to remember you are not of this earth, you are of a different world. And therefore you've got to live by faith, because the just lives by assurance, confidence, and trust in God. And if that's how I'm going to live, then I have to develop that because what I see can be scary. What I see can be deceiving. What I see can be sometimes uh, frustrating. And what do I do? I have to live by faith, not by what I see. And the only way I'll overcome what I see and what I face is by my faith and confidence and trust and belief in God. And as long as I do that, then I can overcome this. If not, I will succumb to that. So here, Paul is telling us, so then faith comes. The word comes there simply means this. The activation and the motion of. So we can say faith is activated and motivated by hearing and hearing the word of God. In other words, the word of God has faith and it is faith in itself. But the word in itself will never be activated in you unless you hear it. And therefore, when you hear it, it gets into motion. And when it gets into motion, it is doing something inside of you. When it is doing something inside of you, then it can do something outside of you. So many times we want the word of God to do something outside of us before it does something inside of us. 
So there is sufficient power in the word of God. And that word has to do something in you. And in order for it to do something in you, I have to hear it. And the more I hear it, the more it's developing my courage. The more it's developing my confidence. The more it's developing my assurance and my belief in God. And while it is doing something in me, it can do something outside of me. And say, therefore, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Therefore, I don't need to rush out to tell you how much word I know. I need to stay inwardly and continue to feed myself the word of God so that I can continue to grow in faith so that when I begin to walk, then it is not me walking, it is my faith that is walking out for me. Because the just must and shall live by faith. Glory be to God. Amen. And therefore, we have to understand that that is how we have to do. Now, you've got to understand that the source of faith in God is His Word. But how many of you know, just because I'm cutting this Word does not mean I'm in faith? Because this is the source of faith in God. If I'm going to have faith in God, then it is His Word. But in order for this Word to be activated and be in motion, then I have to begin to hear it myself. Because if you read the prior verses, it says, Now what shall we say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. For with the mouth one confesses and with the heart one believes. Therefore you have to confess it and you have to believe it. In other words, when I say this word, I begin to believe it. And the moment I begin to believe it, then it begins to activate something in my heart. And when I'm activating it in my heart through speaking it, then now I'm not only speaking, I am speaking to believe. And when I believe, then now I speak what I believe. If you don't speak what you believe, you will never have what you say. Because you're not saying what you're believing, you're saying what you're not believing. But you'll only receive what you are saying, and whatever you're saying, if it is doubt... That is what will come out in the midst of quoting all the scriptures. Because you don't believe it. And so I have to believe this. How do I believe it? I have to hear myself say it. So I have to begin to say this word. That you know what? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How do you know I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? I go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 21. Where it says, Him who knew no sin was made to be seen for us. That I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Romans 5, 1 says, By faith I was made righteous, or I was made just. So therefore, when I accepted Jesus as my Savior, then I am righteous. God made me righteous through Jesus Christ shedding His blood for me. And the more I hear that, the more I begin to get confidence. Because now I understand that if I am righteous, then I've been made right with God. Not based on anything that I've done, but based what, through what Jesus has done. Therefore, through Jesus' sacrifice, I am made right. Through Jesus' sacrifice, I have peace with God. In other words, God is not upset at me. God is happy towards me through Jesus Christ. And as long as I trust God that way, guess what? God is impressed. And guess what? I'm having confidence in me. And when I believe that, now when I begin to speak, I'm speaking what I believe. I'm not just speaking words that are written down. I'm speaking words that have done something inside of me. And that is the faith that will be able to move mountains. Not just any words that we speak. So we have to be able to develop that, build that, and have it inside of us. So then faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. So in other words, the word of God then has got sufficient power... Actually, let me not say that. Let me retract that. The Word of God doesn't have power. The Word of God is powerful. Doesn't the Bible say that the Word of God is quick and powerful? So the Word of God is powerful. It doesn't have power. It is powerful. So what you have in your hands and what you carry with you or whatever you're flipping through the phone is powerful. But that power, will not be act that power will not be in motion until you activate it. Now there is electricity that has been channeled into this building. Whoever walked in here in the first place, this building was dark. But there is power in the building. Until you activate it by switching that switch, you're going to be in total darkness. You can stand in this room, you can say, let there be light... You can fast and pray, but it's not going to be light. You have to activate it. You have to do something. And when you do something, then there's going to be light. Amen? And therefore, sometimes we get mis 
informed or misguided thinking that if i just pray for faith i'm gonna have faith no you're wasting your time just go sit down and begin to hear what the word of god says and begin to say it to yourself when you do that you are developing your faith why because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and therefore the word of god is powerful it is alive one translation says the word of god is alive and it is powerful so it means there is life in the word of god Jesus himself said that the word that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. So there is life in the word of God and that life that is in the word of God has to bring the life of God inside of you. And when you have the life of God inside of you, then I can speak the life of God outside of me and experience the life of God. Amen. So that's how you begin to change your situation. But I'm not, gonna, I'm not there yet. I'm just running ahead of myself. You get it by getting into the word of God. And when you get into the Word of God, you find what the Word of God says about you. You find what the Word of God says about a certain situation. The more you hear that Word, it begins to develop something in you. I may not be seeing any changes. You don't have to see any changes because the Word is working whether you see or not. Amen? We don't have to see anything. We just have to believe. Because if the Bible says, so then, faith comes by hearing, seeing and feeling by hearing the Word of God. It doesn't say that. It says it comes by hearing. All you've got to do is just hear. How will I know that I have faith? Just keep on hearing. You will know that you are in faith. You will know that you are in faith. So faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And since the word of God uh, comes to us and we continue hearing it, then we begin to develop and build up our faith. Now turn with me to Mark 11. I want to share with you something again. When faith begins to come, it begins to do something in your life. Now, you've got to understand also that if faith comes, faith can also go. If faith comes, it can also go. Which means, this is your way of living. Wherever you stop, that is where you're going to cruise at. So you have to continue to be in motion so that the word can be in motion. In other words, let your mouth do the talking. If you stop your mouth, you have stopped your life as a believer because the just shall live by faith. So Mark 11 verses 22, the Bible says, And Jesus replying said to them, Have faith in God constantly. That's what the Amplified Version says. Have faith in God constantly. The... Passion translation says this. Jesus replied, Let the faith of God be in you always. So now let me give you the scenario for this. At the beginning of that particular chapter, Jesus saw a fig tree, and when he saw a fig tree, he went to it so that he might get some figs. It had leaves, from whatever they're saying, that whenever the fig tree has leaves, it should have figs as well. So when he went, he never found the figs. And so what did he do? He spoke to the tree, and he told the tree that no one shall ever eat fruit again from you. And he walked and went. And so the following day, the disciples are walking by, and when they walk by, in verses 20, Paul, uh, Peter says, in the morning... They passed by the fig tree that Jesus spoke to, and it was completely withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Teacher, look, that's the fig tree that you cast. It's now all shriveled up and dead. Well, we don't have Jesus cast up the tree. Jesus spoke to the tree, but Peter is saying, You cast it because it was alive, but now it is dead, so it has to be a curse. Well, you've got to understand the difference between a curse and a blessing is this. A blessing is an empowerment released to help you succeed in life. A curse, on the other hand, is uh, an empowerment released to stop you or hinder, you or hinder you from doing what you're supposed to do. So if you cannot do whatever you're supposed to do, then there is a supernatural power that has been released to stop you. If you try, you can't. You try, you can't. You try, you can't. Because there is a supernatural power that has been released to stop you. If you're doing things and you're succeeding, there's a supernatural power that has been released to help you do that. Well, that is the blessing of the Lord. So God empowers us. He has blessed us. That's why every believer is blessed and is not cursed. Now, every blessing and every curse is released through words. 
Now you as a believer, you've been blessed and there is no curse that can hinder you from doing what God has called you to unless you allow it to. And therefore you need to stand strong and know that whoever God has blessed can never be cursed. The only person who can curse you is you. When you begin to believe what somebody else is saying or you begin to curse yourself and say, I will never be able to mount up to anything. I will never be able to do anything. I am not just good enough. Yes, you are releasing supernatural power to hinder you from succeeding in life with your own words. That's why the Bible says with your own words you'll be judged or with your own words you'll be, uh, you'll be condemned or you'll be set free. You choose whose words are going to set you free. I choose my words to set me free because God gave me his words to set me free. So here Peter says, the tree that you cast has completely withered up. And then Jesus replied and said, have faith in God constantly. In other words, the God kind of faith is possible for every believer to have. You and I as a believer ought, ought to walk in God-like faith. And how does God-like faith look like? How does the God kind of faith look like? It is a kind of faith that speaks to things. Because you'll hear people say that, you know what, I don't know about speaking to things. I don't think that that is right. Well, then Jesus was wrong here. He spoke to a tree. He spoke to a tree and said, nobody will ever eat from you again. And the tree obeyed him. Actually, the tree obeyed his faith, his trust and confidence that he had, that whatever I release will never be against whatever I'm speaking. And so he spoke to that tree. Now you've got to understand that that tree was promising, yet it was not producing. So in our lives, we have things that sometimes are promising and are not producing. We need to speak to them. If you don't speak to them, they'll speak back to you. Just like that tree was speaking back to Jesus. You can come and look and you'll never find any figs. Tree, any figs. And Jesus said, like, you won't keep on speaking to me like that because you're supposed to produce. And if you cannot produce, then you'll never be able to produce fruits anymore. And guess what? The tree had to give up because the word of God is powerful and it is alive. And so Peter said, the tree you spoke to or you cast is withered. Then Jesus said, you have the God kind of faith. Then he says this in verse 23, listen to the truth I speak to you. If someone says to this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. So he is saying that if you will believe what you say, now you've got to qualify that or you've got to justify that. You cannot just believe anything you want that is going to happen. It has to be in line with what God says because you have been born again by the precious blood of the Lamb. You have been born again by the Spirit of God. You have been born again through faith, and therefore, your life that you're living now, you're not living on your own. You are living by the faith of the Son of God, which means your life is going to be lived by the faith of God. Therefore, anything that I'm going to speak and believe has to be in line with what I have been brought into, which is the life of God. And now, if I'm going to renew my mind to the Word of God, then anything that I'm going to speak in line with the Word of God must obey me. Because Jesus says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, no, whosoever shall have uh, faith and believe in his heart and speak to this mountain and tell the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, he will have whatsoever he says. In other words, you have spoken the Word, you have believed the word, and now you're speaking what you believe. In other words, I'm not just going around speaking to everything. I'm speaking on what I believe that is trying to challenge and hinder me live the life that I'm living. Amen? So, for example, it can be like healing. You could have been born into a family maybe that has issues health-wise, or maybe you might believe in then you're, uh, you're attacked in your body quite often, maybe with sinuses or whatever it is, allergies, whatever it is. When you are born again, you have the right to change that. You can change that. And we'll be able to see that in a little bit. It is not something that we just make up to change. No, you can speak to things because now that you've been brought into the kingdom of God, you've been brought into the family of God, you've got to live as a child of God. The Bible says that this temple is the body of the Holy Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord lives, there is liberty. 
And therefore, if there is liberty in the temple of the Holy Spirit, then if there's going to be liberty, then there's also going to be health and healing. Otherwise, you won't be liberated. You won't be at freedom. And therefore, he says, by his stripes, you are healed. And if by his stripes you are healed, then it means this body does not need to walk in sickness and disease. Therefore, I can alternate, I can change that. How do I change that? By beginning to speak the word of God and believe the word of God. And when I speak the word of God and believe the word of God, I get to a point whereby now I am speaking what I believe. And whatever I speak that I believe must be obeyed to the thing that I'm speaking to. When we got uh, married, MFO had problems with her sinus. And uh, she was bleeding a lot at night. Most of the time when we wake up in the morning, her pillow will just have blood. But you know what? We began to get the word of God. And more so, I was believing with her, but she had to get the word in her to believe that. And she had to keep on saying the word, believing the word, saying the word, believing the word, until she believed it. It became alive inside of her. It was not just words written over there. She had to believe it. And when she believed it, her faith spoke. And when her faith spoke, she has never had any other nosebleed again. Why? She she stepped in authority. She developed her faith. She she understood that if I'm going to alter this, if I'm going to change this, then I need to get the word of God coming in. And when the word of God is coming in, it's going to be able to produce life in me. Once it becomes alive inside of me, then when I speak it out of me, it can change the situation that are around. Therefore, don't give up in regards to whatever you're going through. Some of them are going to be instantaneously. Some of them are going to be through endurance. You're going to obtain it. And therefore, you have to endure it. And she endured. She stood on the word of God. Yeah, there are some days she'll wipe her nose. It's bleeding and said, thank God that by his stripes, I am healed. You may be bleeding now, but soon you're not going to bleed anymore. She was in faith. She was trusting God. Say, yeah, God, I know my nose is bleeding right now. But you know what? It's subject to change. Why? Because life is coming inside of me. And it is the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead that will quicken this body that now is being weakened as a result of nose bleed. So she stood there. She stood there. And guess what? That nose bleed had to give in. And it does not bleed anymore. She spoke to it because she believed what the word of God says. Amen. So we have to stand on that. We have to believe that because if you don't stand and believe that, you'll never see it. The issue is this. When you come in as a believer, you have to understand that you have to begin to develop this faith. You'll be around some people who've been around the world for a while, where you'll be seeing their lives. You will get there, but you begin to develop your muscles. I remember uh, when I started uh, doing some exercise and we had to carry some dumbbells. And uh, I could not do it with 10 pounds. Like that was just too heavy. And like, man, this person is crazy asking me to do this. So I looked for five, five pounds. And so even though I was using five pounds, I'm like, man, I'm struggling with the five pounds. So I had to go to the three pounds. That was a little bit better. But you know what? There was a muscles within my body that have never been developed. So anytime I challenge them, they are saying that, no, I can't go there. So I had to start where I was, with the three pounds. Actually, I started with a bottle of water. I just got a bottle of water, and that's what I'll use. I started there. That's where my faith was at. That's where my muscle was at. You know what? The other person could carry 15. And they'll go say, come on, come on. And I'll carry my bottle of water and say, okay, I'm going there. And a time came, and I realized that, you know what? This bottle of water is too light. Let me go to the three pounds. And I started carrying three pounds. Like, oh, yeah, it's a little bit better now. And I did it, and like, you know what? Now I need five pounds. And I'll carry the five pounds. And you know what? I, I'll, I carry ten pounds so easily now without any kind of frustrations. Why? I had to start where I am. And therefore, you as a believer, start where you are. Don't be concerned with the person who is carrying 50 pounds and just like, hey, look at me. Yeah, I can look at you, but look at me too. My faith too is working. Why? Because you know what? It is the same, same faith that we are using. The person who is able to carry 50 doesn't have a greater faith than you. They're just exercising it more than you are. But since you've started, you'll also be where they are. Amen? So you have to exercise that. You have to continue to be diligent just to exercise your faith. Just say it. Believe it. Say it. Believe it. It is working in you. The word of God is working mightily inside of you. Never give up on saying that word. Never give up on believing that word. Keep on saying that word. Keep on believing that word because it is working. You may not see it, but your spirit is growing. 
And therefore, you just have to stay at it and keep at it and keep on going and keep on going. And you know what? If you keep on doing that, you will realize that now you begin to believe God for things you never believed in. The reason why you need to begin to say the word, because faith, it is something that you have developed. You remember in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith gives hope to things, and it is the evidence of things. These things are not seen, but faith stands in place of the things that you're believing God for, or the things that you hope for. You are hoping to be healed, faith stands in place for your healing. And where does faith come from? It comes from the Word of God. So you go to the Word of God, and you get the Word of God, and the Word of God stands in the place of your healing until it manifests this doesn't happen from nowhere. And that's where sometimes we have been misinformed. I just think that if I just say the word, it's going to... No, you just don't say the word. You have to go find the word. If you are hoping for healing, then the evidence has to be in the word. And therefore, you have to find that word. And then you have to begin to speak that word because faith comes by hearing. I need to have faith for healing. Therefore, I need the evidence of healing which is in the word of God, which says, by his stripes I was healed. Jesus himself says, he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes I am healed. That is the evidence of your healing. Therefore, you go take that word, you begin to speak it to yourself and say, the word of God says, Jesus himself took my infirmities, he bore my iniquities, and with his stripes I am healed. When you begin to say that, there is power that is being released inside of you you may not see it you may not feel it but you keep on saying it it begins to grow it begins to grow it is developing inside of you and pretty soon you'll realize that faith the word of god which was the evidence for your healing has stood in place until you wake up one day you realize oh i don't know the last time this happened yeah, because now healing has taken, has come, has manifested in your body. Now you don't really need faith because you already have your healing manifested. So I don't need faith. But before then, the word of God was the evidence. So faith is the substance of the things you're ho hoping for. The evidence of things not seen. Why do you need faith? Because you are in darkness until light comes. If you go to a room, it is dark. You need to turn the lights on in order for you to see. Right now, you may be in pain in your body. You are in darkness to your healing. But the word of God will bring forth light. That's why the Bible says in Psalms 119, verses 130, the entrance of his word gives forth light. So the moment you begin to hear the word of God, light is coming. Light is coming. But it still looks dark. It is okay. Don't give up because that's the light that is coming to enlighten you to walk in light. And once light comes in, you will not be ashamed to say, you know what, look at me. I've been believing God and see what has happened. It happened to me. How did it happen? With you sitting with that bottle of water. Just lift it up. And then I went to the three pounder. And I went to the five pounder. And I went to ten pounder. Now look at me. I'm doing this. You see, it started with a process. You are developing that. And the more you develop it, and sooner you got there. And therefore, you have to be able to stay with the word and never let go. Remember, Hebrews 10.23 says this. Hold fast to the profession of your faith. If we are hold fast, it means you can lose it. Start and then give up. Don't start and say, you know what? Uh, I've been saying this now for a week. I'm not seeing any difference. Don't give up. Because you know what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Keep on hearing and keep on hearing the word of God. Because I mean, the moment you stopped, then you have given up on your faith. You're being told, hold fast to the promises of your faith. Amen? Now turn with me to Luke chapter number 17. So we know that faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I have to stand on the word of God. And you've got to understand that the reason why you have to be able to endure through it, because when faith comes, it comes as a seed. Faith is a seed. And therefore, when you don't grow your seed, then you're letting your seed just lie dormant. And this is in Luke chapter 17 and verses 3. 
Jesus was talking. Actually, let me just read from verses 1 through verses uh, 6. Then said he unto the disciples, it, it is impossible that an offense will come, but what to him through whom they come? It were better for him that a millstone or a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Then verse 3 says, Take heed to yourself if thy brother trespasses against thee, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you again and say, I repent, you shall forgive him. In verses 5, now the apostles come up and say, you know what? They said unto the Lord, increase our faith. You know, you need your faith to be increased if you have somebody who is annoying that you want to bust their lips. They keep on doing the same thing over and over. Like, how many times am I going to tell you this? You know, this is enough. I want to do something. I want to hurt you so that you can leave me alone. Or I want to just do away with you. So they say, you know what? You need to increase our faith in this one. And you know what? Since they needed their faith to be increased, Jesus had to respond to that. And Jesus said this. If you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up and by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it will obey you. So Jesus was referring to them having faith for forgiving. You need faith to forgive. Did you know that? You need faith to forgive. Because there's some things that happen to us. It's like, you know what? If I don't have faith for this one, I'm going to hold on to it forever. Whatever they did for me, whatever I went through, I can never forget and I'll never forgive. But when you have faith to forgive, you can say, I remember what you did to me. But you know what? I let it go so long time ago. It doesn't even bother me anymore. Why? Because I need faith to forgive. In fact, if someone keeps on and keeps on and keeps on and doesn't want to give up, you need faith to forgive. And so, Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed. So, they actually ask Jesus the wrong question. Because they say, increase our faith. Now, you've got to understand, faith is confidence, total confidence, total trust, total reliance, and total assurance in God. So, they were telling Jesus... Increase, in other words, develop our total confidence, our total assurance, and our total trust in God when it comes to forgiveness. And Jesus said, I can do that. You've got to do it yourself. I cannot develop your assurance. I can never develop your trust. I can never develop your confidence. You have to develop it. I cannot do that. So they were supposed to ask him, how do we develop our faith for forgiveness? Not increase my faith, because I can't increase your faith. You are the only one who can increase your faith. Your faith is your confidence, your trust, your assurance. I cannot increase your trust towards somebody else. You are the only one who can say, you know what? I trust you now that I did better. Why? Because there's something you saw, there's something you saw, uh, you've seen, and there's something you've had that made you now develop trust and confidence. And now you say, I trust you now. Nobody else could do that for you. So Jesus told them, if you want to increase your faith, I cannot do it for you. You have to do it this way. But this is what you need to understand. You really don't need your faith to be great. It just needs to be like a seed. If you have faith, in other words, if you have any kind of assurance, any kind of trust in God, don't cast it away. Because that little bit of faith is sufficient enough to get rid of anything that is going to be a problem to you. So many times people say, no, I don't have enough faith for this. No, 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 you have some kind of faith. You've got to use whatever you have. Remember when I started that exercise? Say, get your 10-pounder. And I'm like, I can't do this. I had to go to the bottle of water. Today I can carry 10-pounder. Why? Because I had to use what I have. So use whatever you have. I only, I only trust you halfway. It is okay. God says, it's fine. At least use that. Don't give, don't give up on me. I only trust that if the pastor prays with me, it's going to be okay. It's fine. Call the pastor to pray with you because that's where your faith is. And God is going to honor your faith, whatever it is. But as, as you continue to develop it, a time will come and say, you know what? I don't need to call the pastor because now I know what to do. I received uh, an, a text this, this week. Someone called me for prayer. And then uh, I called them back. And they say, you know, the moment I sent you that text, I realized I did not need to send you that text because I went back to my notes in September when you preached and you told me how to take authority, so I just took authority on my own. 
They said, praise the Lord. You see, they had to go where they are and they used. And there was nothing wrong with them doing that. And you see, we develop our faith. If your faith still is like, no, I need to be with someone. Yes, go ahead and do that. Don't, it doesn't show that you don't have faith. It doesn't show that you're lacking faith. It just means you have your faith and you're working on it. And you stay with it. And so it's, it's, it's as a seed uh, of a mustard seed. And you know what? Of all the seeds that are available in the world, the scientists have said that it is only the mustard seed that cannot be cross-pollinated. You can never have a hybrid mustard seed. Because anything that is hybrid is distorted. So faith can never be mixed by anything else. It has to be pure. So wherever you are, just that little faith, it is pure in itself. Don't try to mix it with something else. It is just pure by itself. And then just use it, just exercise it. And now you've got to understand that since it comes like a seed, you have to be able to do what? You have to be able to develop it. Everybody has been given a measure of faith according to Romans 12, 3. We have all been given a measure of faith. And therefore you utilize what you have. Don't give up, don't feel low, don't feel bad. You have some kind of faith. You have some kind of trust. You have some kind of confidence. If the only confidence you have is praise, what will do this? You just call for prayer and go. That is where your faith starts. And as you continue, it's going to develop. And when you do that, you'll realize that now it is the genuineness of my faith that I'm using. The faith that I'm using. Jesus said, if you will use what you have, then whatever you have, you use. Whatever you're using it against will obey you. He said, this sycamine tree will obey you if you speak to it. When you use your faith. You mean this little faith that I have, I don't have total confidence like you. Yeah, but you have some confidence. Go ahead and use it. And when you use it, Whatever you use it against, it will obey you. But I'm not like you, no. You're not told that, no. Whatever you have, compare to the somebody else and see how much you measure according to them, then it will work. No, use whatever you have. That's what Jesus was saying. You don't need such great faith. You, you want me to increase your faith? Whatever you have, you can speak to this uh, uh, sycamine tree and tell it, be thou removed and it will obey you. So in other words, whatever situation you are facing, you have the word of God working inside of you. You can speak to whatever situation and that situation will obey you. Sickness and disease will obey you. Poverty will obey you. Lack will obey you. You just speak to it according to the word of God. You just don't wake up and say, I'm going to say, no, no. What does the word of God say? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, I need evidence of what I'm believing God for. I need evidence for whatever I'm trusting God for. And where do I find the evidence? In the word. Once I've found the word, the word now becomes the evidence of the thing that I'm believing God for until the thing shows up. And therefore, I begin to develop my faith with that assurance, with that uh, uh, confidence that I have based on the word of God. And pretty soon, I'll be able to say, you know what? I'll never be poor anymore. Someone will say, I can't be that confident. It's okay. One day you will. Because I was never that confident. I just had to use the little bit of faith that I had. And the more I develop that faith, now I begin to declare, I can never be poor again. Why? Because I realized that the Bible says he was made poor so that we might be made rich. And the Bible, I also realize the Bible says God wants us to prosper in all things. In other words, he wants us to succeed in everything, in finances, in health, in relationships, in anything that we do. He wants us to succeed. Therefore, I declare even poverty is part of me overcoming that so that I can be able to be a blessing to other people. But you see, at one particular point, I wasn't there. I thought I'll never make it. I was at the mercy of somebody else. But now because I've developed my faith and trust and confidence in God based on his word, now I can confidently say so because I've developed it. Amen? So the other thing you've got to understand that once you're developing your faith, you've got to stand your ground because faith comes as a seed. But you've got to understand that as long as it is coming as a seed, you have to be able to constantly develop yourself. Because once the seed has been sown, it begins to grow, you begin to plant another seed again. It is like money. If you go to work today, and they paid you today, you received the money, what do you do? You spend it. Do you stay home tomorrow and say, I got the money yesterday, and I spent it yesterday, so I, I, I'll just have money again and go out and spend it. No, you'll go back again and work, and earn the money again and spend it. So faith is not a trophy to be put somewhere and say, look how much faith I have. Faith is not a trophy. Faith is to be utilized. 
your confidence and trust is to be utilized. And once I utilize my faith today, I need to develop it again because I'm going to use it again. Because faith is to be used to overcome. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. Faith in God helps me overcome. Once I overcome a, an obstacle, I need to develop it again because there's another obstacle that is coming and that is the purpose of faith to overcome. Not to be a trophy and say, I've prayed for six people, they've been healed. I've been able to believe God for X amount of money. I've had that. See how many vehicles I have. No, that's not the purpose of faith. The purpose of faith is to overcome. Change things that are not in line with the word of God. Your family is not living right. Use the word of God. Believe God and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, you utilize faith to make things right the way God wants them to be made. And once you understand that, then guess what? I'll continue to develop. If I see my child now is upright, yes, I'm going back again because the devil is never going to give up. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have to keep on developing my faith. When I see something else again, I release my faith because I've been developing it. And so we have to stay at it. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 17. Are you getting something out of this? Develop your faith. Here we have uh, the disciples of Jesus. There is a parent who brought his child uh, that was convulsing. And the, the disciples could not be able to help the child. And so the child's dad approached Jesus. And in verse 17 of Matthew chapter 17, the Dad brought the child to Jesus, and then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. So remember, this again did not take place immediately. It says he began, or the child was cured from that very hour. In other words, it's a progressive healing. It was not an instantaneous healing. So sometimes people get frustrated that, you know what, we prayed, we believed God, but I did not see the full result. No, it began at that particular hour. So it was a continuous going on. You, the child was going to be made whole completely later on, not inter instantaneously. So there are some that take place immediately, some are prolonged. So don't give up on your faith. So he said the child was healed, uh, the, the, the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus later on and said, why could we not cast him out? For them to ask that question, it means they had the ability to do so. Now, you've go, if you go back to chapter 10, you'll realize that Jesus, when he had called the 12, he gave them authority to go out and heal the sick and cast out demons. And they did, and they went. If you read in Luke chapter 10, when he called the 70, he gave them authority and he told them to go out and heal the sick in whatever city they go to. In Luke 10, 17, when they came back, they told Jesus, they were so excited, they said, even the demons were subject to us. Now here, they are asking Jesus, how could we not do this? Which means, I have done this before, but it did not happen this time. So then they asked Jesus in verses 20, no, verses 19, and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. There again he's saying the mustard seed thing. It is not a mixture. He did not say uh, the grain of colored greens or the grain of an orange. He said the grain of a mustard seed because it can never be crossbred. You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence here to the yonder. And it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind goes out by prayer and fasting. A lot of people have misunderstood that and have said that, you know what, this child had a demon, uh, was demon possessed, and this demon could not go out except by prayer and fasting. Wrong. Because Jesus has said in his word, when you cast out demons in my name, they will flee. If prayer and fasting will get this kind of demon out, it means the name of Jesus is not strong enough. What Jesus was referring to over here is this kind of unbelief will only be gotten rid of through prayer and 
fasting. You have to pray and fast to deal with it because apparently you must have seen the situation was different and maybe you are doubting it. And because you are doubting it, it's only now fasting that will get you out of the flesh and keep you in the spirit where you can deal with it in the spirit. And therefore, with this kind of unbelief, you have to pray and fast to help your faith work. Amen? And therefore, you realize that even though they had faith, they could not be able to use it because they never developed that faith. They used it at one time. They saw the results at one time, but they failed to develop it. They thought that since I already saw it once, I don't have to develop it anymore because it has already happened. It's going to happen again, only to be surprised that it's not happening. It's, oh, my goodness, why is it not happening? What's wrong? It's because you're not developing whatever you already have. It's a seed. A seed has to go into the ground. You know, if you talk to a farmer today who gets a seed from the store and holds it in that packet, the farmer can hold that packet in his hand, lay hands on that packet, pray for that packet, Believe God for that packet that he's going to get a great harvest. But unless he takes that seed and put it in the ground, it will still be seeds in a packet. And therefore, unless you take this word and begin to hear it and begin to say what you heard that you believe, you will never see the harvest of this word. This word is alive and it is active and it is sharper than any two-double-edged sword. It works for whoever believes it. It, uh, it works for whoever will act upon it. It will work for whoever will be willing to put it into practice. You activate it by hearing yourself and saying it so that it can produce the results. Amen? Amen. I believe that this word tonight was able to help you develop that. And uh, I have an example to be able to give you, but you'll have to come back next Wednesday. Because <laughs> now I'll give you somebody who did all these things step by step. You saw how they developed. They were in a situation whereby nothing was possible for them. Whatever the way their situation was looking like, there's nothing that was going to take place. Naturally, everything was against them. But they believed God and we saw the results come to place and it was because of their faith. They continued to believe in God. They continued to stand in the word of God. And as a result of that, the Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful. It is active. It is well. And when they begin to believe that word of God, it developed something inside of them to the point whereby whatever they were facing was not an issue anymore because faith is the victory that overcomes. And now they had developed the confidence to the point whereby whatever situation I'm facing, I have total confidence in God that I'll overcome this because the word of God is the evidence that this too shall come to pass. And guess what? It is subject to change and it changed because the word of God never fails. The word of God never falls down and, and, and never comes back up. It always will produce that which pleases God. And as long as they stood on the word of God, they saw the results of God. Amen. So I believe the same thing will happen to you next time when we meet. Actually, it will be the other Wednesday. Because next Wednesday, we'll be having the privates ministering at night. So you'll have to come next Wednesday. Then you'll have to come the following Wednesday and see how you can apply this in life. It is for everybody, not just some special people. You are special before God. And if you take his word and put it into practice, it will work for you just like anybody else. There is nobody who is special. I'm not special. I have to take this word and I have to put it into practice just like you. Because I'm only anointed to preach it. I'm not anointed to live it. I have to take what I'm preaching and I have to put it into practice so that it can work in my life. It's the same, same thing that you're doing. I'm not special. I don't have a special anointing for living it. I just have anointed to preach it. And I believe that we can all live it together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we honor you tonight. We bless and praise you for speaking your word to us. And Father Lord, we've learned how to have faith. We've learned how to develop faith. We've learned the importance of faith. And Father Lord, as we continue to hear your word, it develops us, it gives us confidence, and it gives us a surety in you that, Father, there is nothing that is impossible to them that believe. Lord, your word gives us the confidence to move from the impossibilities to possibilities. And Lord, it brings us to a place where the things that are not uh, into reality can be brought into reality as a result of your word. And so I pray over every individual that, Lord, they'll put your word into practice and it will work as a reality in their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, I cover them with your blood and I declare that your word will continue to be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And uh, looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Come expectant and allow God to work in your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.